Good morning. I'm Sue Prey. I am filling in this morning for Pastor Vicki McGaw as she takes a Sunday off. Welcome to Middleburg Heights Community United Church of Christ. We are glad you are here. Welcome to all who are visiting for the first time or who have returned after some time away. We continue with our Zoom worship format, which allows us to stay safe, but also have our sense of community. Another advantage is that it allows many to attend who are not otherwise able to travel to the sanctuary and allows people who are on vacation to worship with us. In Zoom, you have the option of gallery view or speaker view. Gallery view allows you to see other viewers and experience the community of this congregation, even as we worship in this distance format. We ask that you keep your mute on. Multiple open mics distort the sound. Use the chat box located in the taskbar to share your prayer concerns, which we will be looking at later. We give thanks to the great team of technicians and musicians who make this worship possible. Our musicians, Gail Lingenfelter, Sandy Ewell, Patty Skoritz, Katie Kramer, Noah Toth, and Jared Soroff, and our technicians, Mike McGaw and Tom Casterline, who make this whole worship experience seem so easy, but there's many hands. We also thank this morning's liturgist, Janice Lianza. We thank all of you for your time and your gifts. A few announcements. Until further notice, the church building remains closed. We had anticipated opening for small groups, but the increase in virus cases has caused us to practice safety and back off for a bit. Since we are not in the sanctuary, we missed the opportunity to use flowers as a way to honor special occasions and loved ones. Consider a music sponsorship as a way to do this in our virtual world. We have been so blessed to have a team of dedicated and talented and technologically savvy musicians to enhance our worship, but there are extra costs associated with freelance musicians and technology. On the website in the donation list under miscellaneous gifts, notate Sunday Music Fund, as well as who or what you might be honoring, or you can remain anonymous. A gift of $40 has been suggested. Cheer parades will now be monthly, and our next one is scheduled for next Sunday, January or July, January, July 19th. Please join us as we drive by some of our members at their homes or care facilities. It is a drive-by, no getting out of cars, but it brings us some joy and an awareness that they are remembered. The second talent show that was scheduled for July 14th has been postponed. We hope this can be rescheduled at some point in the future. The Upper Room is a devotional resource that is loved by many. It was available in our church lobby, but now can be accessed by a link in the Good News. The Benefit Outrun Ovarian Cancer 2020 is happening on August 11th, and registration is going on now and ends on July 15th. Information on registration can be found in the Good News. This event is dear to this congregation, honoring all those we have lost to this dreaded disease, including most recently, Megan McGaw and Debbie Anderson. Our check-in chats continue every weekday at 3 p.m. via Zoom. Check in for some connection during these times of isolation. All are welcome. And now, let us enter into this space for worship by hearing the prelude.
As a people of God, we are called to imagine a world where we follow God's law, to show love, to act in love, to be in community, to show compassion. In the past three weeks, we have imagined that world. Last week, we were reminded that we are not quite there yet, but must have courage to be transformed, to enter with joy this new dimension of living the word. This Sunday, we will explore the process by which we might experience this transformation. And the result is freedom. As we imagine the kingdom of God in our world today, we want our community to be in right relationship with God. But what does this vision look like? And how do we become transformed? How do we move from our current state of conforming to the world to a place where we are conforming to a higher reality. Join me in this responsive reading from Psalm 85. Let us declare our faith in God, declare and do not doubt. But how can we build faith to trust the Lord? Remember. Remember? The psalmist remembered God and said, you forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. We remember. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned away from your hot anger. We remember. Now speak like a psalmist. Cry out to the Lord. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away indignation toward us. Cry out to the Lord. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Trust God. God will speak peace to God's people, to the faithful, to those who turn to God in their hearts. Declare this. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. And the glory of the Lord will dwell in our land and in our homes and in this place and in us. Join us as we sing, I am the light of the world.
The scripture reading today is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 through 23 and 25. After Paul established the new Christian community in Galatia, they were visited by other evangelists who were insisting that to be a follower of Jesus, one first had to align with Jewish traditions and rituals. The rules of diet and sacrifice were most likely emphasized. Most of Paul's converts were Gentiles, and many of the Jewish followers of Jesus believed that they were skipping a step by not becoming Jewish first. In Paul's letter to the Galatians, he is reminding the community that they need not concern themselves with those laws. Instead of law, Paul talked about love and salvation and faith. He did not offer rules for following Jesus, but rather freedom from those rules. So, in his letter, Paul was reminding the Galatians that divine acceptance comes not from reliance on traditional religious practices, but from faith in Jesus and following the most basic commandment, love thy neighbor. Paul is reminding this community of the need to be in relationship with each other, and with that comes true freedom. Hear these words of the Apostle Paul to the Galatians from The Message. It is absolutely clear that God has called you to a free life. Just make sure that you don't use this freedom as an excuse to do whatever you want to do and destroy your freedom. Rather, use your freedom to serve one another in love. That's how freedom grows. For everything we know about God's word is summed up in a single sentence. Love others as you love yourself. That's an act of true freedom. If you bite and ravage each other, watch out. In no time at all, you will be annihilating each other. And where will your precious freedom be then? My counsel is this. Live freely, animated, and motivated by God's spirit. Then you won't feed the compulsions of selfishness. For there is a root of sinful interest in us that is at odds with the free spirit. The free spirit is incompatible with selfishness. These two ways of life are antithetical, so that you cannot live at times one way, and at times according to how you feel on any given day. Why don't you choose to be led by the Spirit, and so escape the erratic compulsions of a law-dominated existence? It is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. Repetitive, loveless, a stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage, frenzied and joyless grabs for happiness, trinket gods, magic show religion, paranoid loneliness, cutthroat competition, all-consuming yet never satisfied wants, a brutal temper, an impotence to be loved, divided homes, divided lives, small-minded and lopsided pursuits, the vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival, uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions, ugly parodies of community. I could go on. This isn't the first time I have warned you, you know. If you use your freedom this way, you will not inherit God's kingdom. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives, much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Legalism is helpless in bringing this about. It only gets in the way. Since this is the kind of life we have chosen, the life of the spirit, let us make sure that we do not just hold it as an idea in our heads or a sentiment in our hearts, but work out its implications in every detail of our lives. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Pray with me. May these words be your words, O Holy One. May we be led by your spirit to be transformed. We are your people. Lead us. 
guide us. Help us to love. Amen. In this four-week worship series, we have been asked to imagine being the family of God, being in right relationship with God, and what does it look like to be a community that is believing, receiving, and becoming God's love. Our scripture from Galatians offers up an image of what this looks like and how easy or how challenging this might be. I'll give you a hint about the key takeaways from this sermon. There are a few words that you will hear. Love, faith, and freedom. Freedom. Paul writes to the Galatians about freedom, but what does he mean? He's trying to help them understand that by living by God's word, being a true follower of Jesus does not have to be that complicated. It's not about a list of rules and rituals. There is only one, love thy neighbor as thyself. We've heard these words before. So much so that when you, we hear them, we just kind of nod dismissively. But we're gonna unpack them a little more this morning. But before we get to love, let's talk about faith. Faith was a big part of Paul's message to the Galatians. He tries to help them understand that faith includes acts of love, but acts without faith are incomplete, unsatisfying. I knew a man who was a caring, compassionate person. He walked the neighbor's dog, he ran errands for people, he cared for his mother, he was kind, but he had no faith. He had good works, he followed the rules, but he didn't smile much. He was missing the joy of a life of faith. I know another person who regards herself as a Christian. She goes to church every Sunday, but she expresses a lot of selfishness and anger. She casts aspersions on others. She judges. She's envious. She's bitter. She believes she deserves more. She's unhappy. She believes she's following the rules and is frustrated that others are not living as she is. She was missing that faith through love part of this equation. Both of these people are missing faith, true faith, faith working through love, faith in Jesus, faith that our salvation is promised, faith that life can have meaning and joy. Without faith, there is no freedom. Both of these people were missing some of the best parts of life, joy, freedom, love. So about faith, faith is different from belief. Belief is knowing something is true. Belief is acknowledging that something exists. But faith, that's richer. That involves so much more. Faith involves trust. It involves commitment. To be faithful involves loyalty and perhaps sacrifice. Faith often involves giving something of yourself. Faith endures. Paul says in Galatians 5 verse 6, the only thing that counts is faith working through love. The only thing that counts is faith working through love. So faith, love. We get to faith through love. So what about this love thing? Well, they were not speaking of love in the sense of emotion or romance. We're using love as a verb, to love. To love someone involves more than just saying so. Love involves caring, compassion, respect, interest, helping. Love involves a genuine curiosity about others. Love is concern for the well-being of the other. Love involves caring that others have food and shelter and security and opportunities and involves taking action to ensure this. Love is doing something to relieve suffering. Love is paying attention. Love is listening and hearing. Love is being involved. And who are we commanded to love? 
Well, I think Jesus made that pretty clear. So to be a people of God requires us to be working through love to be a people of faith. Jesus never said that following him would be easy, but he invites us to follow and be blessed with gifts, gifts of salvation and freedom. Did you know Jesus says, follow me at least 20 times in the four gospels? There's something to this. It's an invitation, not a command, but if you accept the invitation, there are a few strings attached. To follow Jesus involves more than just worship, prayer, singing. It's more than just acts of praise and thanksgiving. Of course, those are important, but following Jesus means understanding his social justice message. When Jesus says, love thy neighbor, he wasn't talking about those who you know and who you already have relationships with. Yes, you must love those people, but you already do. He means people we don't know people we may not understand, people we may find quite different from us. And to reiterate, loving these people means being interested, listening, being involved, showing compassion and caring, the kind of love that is a verb, the kind of actions of love that reveal God. Remember all the people Jesus loved who were strangers? Remember all the times his disciples tried to dissuade him from engaging? But he engaged anyway, even with those who were outsiders and untouchable. Love thy neighbor as thyself. This does not mean to love a person in the way you would want to be loved. What this means is to love others as much as you love yourself and to love them in a way that they need to be loved. Have you ever had to do a gift exchange for someone you don't know? So how'd you do it? You ask questions, you learn more about them, you found something that fit, or you might have even asked them directly what they needed. You listened when they spoke. You didn't just give them what you would want or what you think they should want. So in order to love someone, to engage in the act of loving, we need to listen and learn and understand. To love someone so much, you don't want them to suffer. You don't want them to die. You, don't, you, you want to act and you want to offer help. To learn how to love even those who seem unlovable. I'm going to pause for a minute and let that sink in. Especially considering the events of recent weeks, months, years, how can we show love to those who we may not know and who seem so different? How can we learn and listen and hear and understand? How can we be a church that stands for promoting racial equity? Very soon you'll be hearing about some workshops and activities that have been created to help us engage in learning and listening to be better informed and to understand racial injustice. The first leg of this journey will be a six session work workshop and we're planning on offering both day and evening times. These groups will involve videos, discussion, reflection in a covenanted and sacred space. Very safe and all via Zoom. Other activities such as book discussions and movies and casual conversation groups are also in the making. The dates have not yet been set, but watch your good news for the announcements. We hope most of you will find a place where you can participate in these activities. So love is a verb. Faith in God is shown through that love, that action. And Paul tells us that by following God's law, we will be free. Paul's idea of freedom is freedom from those things that keep us tied to this world. Selfishness, greed, status. He had quite a long list. You heard Janice read that list earlier. To live by God's law, to live being filled by the spirit for Paul makes everything else fall into place. Life makes sense. 
We can discern God's will. Life has meaning. Your gifts become apparent. Imagine being a people of God. We've been talking about this for four weeks. Last week, we imagined the transformation. So this week, we learn how. Faith in God, shown through loving your neighbor, caring for all, caring for creation, listening, helping, acting. And I know we can do this. We're not quite there yet, but we want to be. We continue to show up, to pay attention, and to want more. So here we are. Imagine being a people of God. Imagine all the people of God being truly free. Imagine. And let, let all the people say, Amen. Amen. that you remember your pledge cards, remember our church, and pledge cards to support our church. Currently, we have 70% of our budgeted need met through pledges, and we're hoping that the rest will come in very soon. I also ask that you continue your offerings by mail or online giving, especially during these times when we are all a bit disconnected. This morning, we want to set our prayer intentions for Lorraine as she recovers from a fall and is back in her, her apartment now and recovering. 
We also pray for Gus, who is recovering at home and doing well. And continued prayers for Lorraine, Joe, Carol, and Peg, all who are recovering from recent surgeries. Jared, are there any other prayer concerns for us today? There's just a few. Um, Patty asks for prayers for her dad, her mom, and her family. Um, Patty's dad is at Southwest Hospital with gallstones, and the doctors are watching an aneurysm that he also has, um, trying to figure out how to uh, treat him at his age of 93 years. And on top of that, um, there's only one visitor allowed per day, so um, that's a little hard too. Uh, Barb also asked for prayers for a former coworker and his wife, Ken and Bonnie. Bonnie fortunately survived her bout with COVID, but Ken uh, lost uh, his battle with it earlier this week. Their hearts are broken over the loss of um, this gentle giant of a man. Allison asked for prayers for her friend, Mary Ellen. She's had multiple health issues arise over the last few months, and doctors have not been able to figure out what is wrong. Looks like that's it on the chat. Thank you, Jared. And also continuing prayers for my friends, Nancy and Ruben, um, as they continue their excellent progress in recovering from COVID. Uh, they're separated in different facilities, but are now engaged in telephone chats with each other, which is very encouraging. And now let us be in an attitude of prayer. Keep in your hearts all those who have been named and those unnamed, but known to God. There is power in prayer. Let us be silent and still. God, you make it sound so easy to love, to be faithful only to you, but you know how distracted we are. You know there are so many competing loyalties and that we don't always keep you first. And we struggle with love. How, God? But you are patient. You continue to be there even as we struggle to understand the idea of neighbor and love. You are patient as we show up week after week, still a bit unsteady, still trying to find a way in this new way of being in this world. How, God? But we are showing up. We are your people. Transform us to be loving and faithful followers of Jesus. Grant us courage to confront our fears and our uncertainties. We are your people. We lift up to you this community, this country, this world, as we struggle with pandemic and the resulting economic struggles, the even greater fracturing of this country, the maligned reputation of our nation's place in the world. Help us to be voices of reason in a time of such great confusion and distress. Help us to be a calming presence to those who are struggling. And be with us on this journey as we continue discerning how to do your work in a time of physical disconnection. We are your people. We offer thanks this day for your ever faithful presence the one who brings us together and holds us as community. Holy one, you are still speaking. Help us to hear, for it is in hearing that we may learn, understand, and truly love our neighbor. In all things, we praise you. Let us continue in prayer in the way Jesus taught when he said, pray this way. Our creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now join us in singing our closing hymn, Rise Up, O Saints of God. gratitude for this moment, this place, these people. We are the faithful, the people of God. Move us from here to live as a community transformed. Send us on our way, gifted with your power to serve your people. Amen. And now, those who wish, hang around for a while as we engage in our virtual way of doing coffee hour. Open your mics and have a conversation. I do have a request. I had started my sermon with